Thanks for tuning in. I'm Joshua Roberts, attorney at law, and you are watching Lawyer Up. Today we're going to be talking about the history of marijuana going back 6,500 years to its first recorded use. We're gonna talk about the evolution of the use of marijuana or cannabis has evolved over the years and how the law has responded around the globe uh, to the increased popularity of marijuana. Today we're gonna to talk about the cannabis plant. We're gonna talk about families and strains. We're gonna talk about preparations and uses all around the world. We're also going to talk about what makes marijuana marijuana, and that's the psychoactive components in the drug. We'll be discussing all of those things and more in today's episode about marijuana. If you learned something today, hit that like button. If you want to know more, subscribe. Hey, if you got something to say to me, comment below. And as always, share me on social media. I really appreciate it. So today we're talking about cannabis, weed, ganja, dope, pot, grass. It's called a lot of different things. And some people will get all hyper-technical with you and they'll say, well, cannabis is one thing, marijuana is something different. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, all of those things are gonna mean basically the same thing and can be used interchangeably. Now, we all know that marijuana is the flower or the bud that comes from the cannabis plant that can be used for recreational, spiritual, industrial or medicinal purposes. Now, interestingly, the cannabis plant has over 480 individual compounds in the plant, but most people only care about a couple of them. And the number one thing that people care about, the tetrahydrocannabinol, right? Tetra, T, hydro, H, cannabinol, C, THC. That's what everybody is concerned about when it comes to marijuana. And that's because that is the psychoactive component. That is the component that makes you high and the component that evokes a physiological response in the mind and body. The other area of interest is in the cannabidiol. And that's canna, C, B, B, diol, and that's CBD. Now the difference between THC and CBD is that CBD is not a psychoactive component. Uh, it might make you feel a little bit warm and fuzzy, but it doesn't get you high, which is primarily why THC products are highly regulated throughout the globe and CBD products are a lot less regulated in the United States and elsewhere. Now let's talk about what the word psychoactive means. It simply means that it's something uh, that affects the mind and the body. And marijuana, of course, does that. Now, marijuana can be smoked, it can be vaporized or vaped, it can be consumed in food or drink in what are usually called edibles. It can also be used as an extract in oil. No matter how it's consumed, there is usually a mental and a physical response in the human body. Some mental effects include changes in thoughts and perceptions, changes in concentration and memory, including an altered sense of time and space perception. There are some negative effects in some people, it evokes feelings of anxiety and or panic. Some physical responses include an increase in heart rate, an increase in appetite, a decrease in blood pressure, a decrease in psychomotor function, and usually it relaxes the muscles. Short-term side effects from the use of marijuana include red eyes, uh, dry mouth and coughing. Long-term side effects from marijuana use can include some cognitive or memory function issues. Uh, it can create uh, chronic coughing and make the user more susceptible to respiratory problems uh, such as bronchitis. Now moving on to the cannabis plant itself. There are three major families of cannabis. That is cannabis sativa. This is the main and most popular family. Uh, this is the uh, strand that has the highest uh, THC count. Most of the marijuana that is consumed comes from the sativa uh, family, including most of the CBD oil. Now, another family is the indica, cannabis indica family. Uh, this is a uh, usually considered a more mild 
a strand of uh, the marijuana. THC levels are usually lower with indica. Uh, higher levels of CBD are found in this particular family of marijuana. Some people refer to it as the more mellow of the two. Uh, they uh, refer to uh, sativa as a shot of whiskey while uh, indica is a glass of wine. Uh, it's based upon personal preference with most people. Now the third family member uh, of the cannabis plant is the ruderalis family. Now a lot of people forget about this. They call this the ditchweed cousin of the other two because it has a relatively low level of THC. However, to people who cultivate and grow marijuana, ruderalis is a very significant uh, family member because this is a hardy plant. It grows quickly. It can grow in a cooler climate than the other two. Ruderalis does not require a very sensitive light schedule to mimic day and night so that the marijuana plant will flower. And so a lot of horticulturists will blend strains. They will add sativa and or indica to the ruderalis to make it easier to grow a higher THC level of marijuana. Now marijuana plants also come in male and female. The male plant produces pollen. The female plant produces the flower or the marijuana bud. So you want female plants, obviously, if you're looking for the marijuana product. Now, you can actually tell the difference in these plants by looking. And no, the male plants don't have balls on them. Uh, the female plants have something called pistils. It's P-I-S-T-I-L-S. -S. It's a feature on the plant. A uh, little spike sticking out. It's nuanced, and if you're interested in the topic, you can certainly Google it to get more visual indications of what the female marijuana plant looks like. Now, you've always heard people talk about strains of marijuana, and this is not a actual term in horticulture. This is more of a slang term, uh, and it refers to individual characteristics of the marijuana product that is in front of you usually. You've probably heard of some of the famous strains. Maui Wowie, Acapulco Gold, Thai Stick, Blue Dream. People talk about Skunk Bud, which is usually a marijuana that has a very high THC count. George Carlin had a comedy album called Toledo Window Box, where he was talking about uh, some marijuana that was grew uh, apparently in Toledo in a window box. So when people are talking about a strain of marijuana, they're talking about its individual characteristics, uh, its appearance, uh, its aroma, the growing method, maybe it was hydroponic or otherwise, or even the location of where it comes from. Now the next topic we will turn to are the broad uses for marijuana, and there are several. And the first and probably the most popular is recreational use. And that's simply people who ingest marijuana because they like it. That's why you engage in recreational activities because it's something you enjoy. So there's the broad category of people who ingest marijuana just to get high. It is what it is. A second category is the medicinal category. This is the use of cannabis as a doctor recommended herbal therapy. Uh, in the United States, this requires a prescription, but there is a great deal of medicinal purposes out there where marijuana has seemed to benefit the patient. Marijuana has been used to decrease nausea in chemotherapy patients, to increase the appetite in HIV or AIDS patients, to treat chronic pain, to treat people who have intense muscle spasms, to treat epilepsy, to treat uh, eye pressure and eye pain in glaucoma patients. Marijuana has been used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, individuals with pain from multiple sclerosis, and for other neuropathic pains. Medicinal marijuana is legal in 33 states in the United States. It's also legal in Canada, Belgium, Australia, the Netherlands, and Spain, just to name a few countries. There are also spiritual uses of marijuana. We'll talk about a few uh, from ancient history. Uh, nowadays, really, the spiritual use of marijuana is pretty much regulated to the Rastafarian movement uh, and their followers. These individuals use uh, marijuana as a sacrament to induce uh, meditation. Uh, as part of their religious ceremonies. Last but not least, there are industrial uses of marijuana, and this is generally hemp. This comes from the cannabis sativa plant, 
but it is grown specifically for use in fiber, uh, rope, paper, clothing, biodegradable plastics. It can be used in paint. It can be used in insulation. It can be used for biofuel and even food. Hemp is generally not regulated because it's specifically uh, designed to have a very low THC count. And products that have a very low THC count are generally unregulated uh, in the United States. So now let's switch gears a little bit and we're gonna talk about the history and the use of marijuana. Now the cannabis plant itself is indigenous to Central Asia and the India subcontinent as it's called. Uh, this is the country of India and the surrounding nations and it goes up into Central Asia into all the Stan countries. Uh, Uzbekistan is the only one of them I can even pronounce. Uh, but it's in this area that the cannabis grew originally uh, on the planet Earth. And we know it was used for fabric and rope as far back as 4500 BC. So we're talking 6500 years ago, people were using cannabis. Now, it is not entirely clear when people started uh, using or smoking or inhaling cannabis for other purposes. The oldest archaeological evidence of the burning of cannabis comes from Romanian uh, burial shrines uh, where they have unearthed these urns. Uh, when they carbon dated them, they went back to 3500 BC and they found burned or charred remains of cannabis. So we know at least 5,500 years ago, uh, people were burning cannabis. Jump ahead to 2,500 BC, uh, and we know that the Assyrians in what is modern day Iran, uh, Turkey, and Syria were using cannabis in religious ceremonies called kanubu. Uh, that is actually where the word cannabis comes from. And writings that come from these ceremonies said that they would burn cannabis to induce a trance. Uh, yeah, or to get high, right? In 1500 BC, uh, they have found pipes uh, that contain traces of cannabis in Ethiopia. So we know at least 3,500 years ago, people were smoking marijuana. If we jump to 1000 BC, uh, there are people in India drinking the drink Bang, B-H-A-N-G, and this is a marijuana-infused drink that was popular then. Heck, it's popular now. There are bars that sell this drink in India in present day. Now let's fast forward to modern history. In 1842, an Irish physician named William O'Shaughnessy brought back a whole bunch of weed from Bengal, India. He had been studying the medicinal effects of marijuana in Bengal. Uh, so when he returned uh, back to uh, Europe, he brought a bunch with him. And the uh, Europe and the West have really never been the same. Uh, it spread like wildfire throughout Europe. It jumped the pond to the United States where it was popularized, went to Canada, it went down to Mexico, uh, and basically caught on like wildfire. It was so popularized and so widely used in the West that by 1930 in the United States, the recreational use of marijuana was illegal. Uh, you could still use it for medicinal purposes, but as far as recreational use in the 1930s, it was declared illegal in the United States. Now, medicinal uses of marijuana continued until 1970. Uh, then after the Controlled Substances Act, in the United States, even the medicinal uses of marijuana was declared illegal. So while cannabis had been around for 6,500 years, only in the 20th century did governments decide it was time to criminalize the use of cannabis. As we went through the 60s and the 70s, even though there was a lot of use of marijuana, it became illegal in almost every country in the world. In 1972, the Netherlands was the first country to say, hey, wait a minute, we don't need to treat marijuana like every other drug. And they actually separated drugs into more serious drugs, which they charged as a felony, and less serious drugs, which they charged as the misdemeanor. Uh, so the Netherlands were the first country to break marijuana out and say this is a less serious drug and should be treated less seriously. 
a lot of other nations have filed suit since that time, including the United States, where today, even in states where it's illegal, a small amount or a personal possession amount of marijuana is considered a misdemeanor. Interestingly, in the last 10 years, the pendulum has swung the other way uh, toward the decriminalization or the legalization of marijuana. In fact, in 2013, Uruguay in South America was the first country to declare marijuana use uh, legal for all purposes, including recreational. Since that time, several other countries have followed suit including South Africa, uh, Australia, and even Canada, our neighbors to the north. Interestingly, federally in the United States, marijuana is still illegal. However, 33 states have legalized the medicinal use of marijuana, and 11 states have even legalized the recreational use of marijuana. This seems to be an interesting conflict that it's illegal federally in all 50 states. However, in particular states, uh, it is legal. And by and large, the feds have respected the states where they have decriminalized marijuana. Now, this is for personal use or within the state's guidelines only. If you still traffic in large amounts of uh, marijuana, you can expect to be visited and bothered uh, by the feds. Now, even though the feds generally will defer to the state's laws, it's important uh, regarding the use, possession, cultivation of marijuana that you understand the law of the jurisdiction that you're in. Because states' uh, laws differ from state to state, even within a state, within a county, you can have different rules. Some places you can have a personal small amount of marijuana, and other places you can actually grow a certain number of plants. Uh, but it's important that you understand where you are if this is something that you are going to engage in. And it's especially important if you travel internationally. Uh, down in Jamaica, if you have less than 56 grams of marijuana, which is considered a personal use amount, it's still a crime, but it's a $5 fine. If you go 300 miles west to Grand Cayman, that same amount of uh, marijuana will land you in prison for a lengthy prison term. In India, you can sit in a bar and drink bang uh, all day long. However, in Eastern Asia, possession of even a small amount of marijuana will get you a prison sentence. And if you are caught selling it, you can get life in prison, even executed for the sale of marijuana. Iran, Singapore, Saudi Arabia routinely execute drug dealers. So you wanna make absolutely sure where you are and how the laws apply to whatever behavior it is that you plan to engage in. Now let's shift gears again and talk a little bit about the preparation and the consumption of uh, marijuana in modern society. Now we all know about the dried leafy bud that is marijuana. Uh, we're all familiar with that. This comes from the female plant and can be consumed in a variety of ways, which we will talk about a little bit later. Now there's also something called keef, and essentially this is ground up marijuana. It can be consumed in powder form or it can be compacted uh, into round balls or hashish cakes. Uh, there's also the hashish and essentially that is compacted keef or powdered marijuana. And there is hash oil, which is extracted from the cannabis plant. This oil can actually be the most potent of all of the various varieties because it contains the highest level of THC per volume of all of the preparations of marijuana. And there are literally thousands of infusions. And this is where you take the marijuana and you infuse it into something else. You can infuse it into butter. You can infuse it into hand lotions. Any variety of things uh, is an infusion of THC and or uh, marijuana. Now, when we talk about the forms of consumption, most people are of course familiar with smoking it. Uh, and you can do that through a variety of ways. Uh, you can use a device called a bong and really anything can be a bong. I've seen people use an empty 12 ounce pop can or beer can uh, to smoke out of. I've seen people smoke marijuana out of a toilet paper roll. Anything can really be a bong. You move up to a hookah, which is essentially just a water bong. That is a device that adds water or a cooling agent uh, into the smoking of the marijuana. There are the classic joints where you take the marijuana leaves and you wrap them in some sort of a paper. 
Uh, there are blunts where you take the same marijuana leaves, but you're wrapping them in tobacco leaves to smoke. Now, a new way to smoke uh, marijuana or the THC is by vaporizing the THC or vaping. And what is interesting about this is that the THC is heated to a target temperature. The temperature is between 330 and 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And what it does is it vaporizes the THC so that you can inhale it, but it doesn't burn any of the other plant material or substance, so there's no smoke. So it's a very interesting and new way of basically ingesting the THC. There are also edibles. Now most people are familiar with pot brownies, but nowadays they have uh, marijuana uh, suckers. Uh, they have gummies, which are wildly popular as an edible. And then we've talked about before the bang, which is a uh, drink in India. They also have, you know, simple teas uh, that are cannabis teas uh, that you can consume it by drinking. And last but not least, there are now little capsules of marijuana which contain THC. This has become uh, very popular in Canada. Hasn't caught on quite as well uh, here in the United States. Now, finally, I'm going to leave you with a few statistics. Now, marijuana is the most widely used illegal drug in the world. Uh, now, in 2016, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime did a global survey, uh, and the results were interesting. In the United States, 51% of Americans said they had tried marijuana, 12% said they had used it in the past year, and 7% said they'd used it in the past month. In the United States, men are twice as likely to use marijuana than women. And the 18 to 29 year old crowd is six times as likely to use marijuana as the 65 and older group. Marijuana use in the United States is three times the global average, uh, which might be surprising, except that it's consistent with the usage in Canada and the usage in Mexico. So apparently the Northern hemisphere is very marijuana friendly. And last but not least, I just want to uh, speak to you uh, with a bit of a word of warning. Uh, marijuana is generally considered a safe drug and there is a general consensus that you cannot overdose on marijuana. Uh, and I'm not here to debate that with you. Uh, but what I will say that as an attorney, I have seen uh, several cases uh, where the marijuana gets laced. Uh, today, uh, dealers are looking for a little more bang for your buck uh, or a little way to distinguish their product. Uh, and they're lacing marijuana with heroin. They're lacing marijuana with fentanyl uh, and people are dying from that. So uh, if you are going to partake in this type of a thing, you want to make sure you know where your product comes from. Uh, because while marijuana in and of itself may be safe, and I know there's those out there that would argue that point, uh, if you don't know what you're getting, you may be ingesting something that can kill you. So you guys stay safe in all that you do. And that is the episode on the history of marijuana. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you learned something today, hit that like button. If you got something to say, comment below. If you want to learn more, subscribe to the channel. And as always, share me on social media. It's been fun today going back 6,500 years to the origins of the usage of marijuana on this planet. There's more exciting videos to come. Thank you for watching. Lawyer up. Send lawyers, guns, and money. Dad, get me out of this.